Hello, everyone. I'm so glad that you are here and joining and viewing for our Parent Lunch and Learn. We're going to be talking about LGBTQ books for kids. And the last time that I did this type of presentation, I had uh, very incorrectly focused on books for babies and pre-K um, and toddlers and children up. And then I stopped at third grade. Um, and then the parents that joined had all voiced incredible amounts of interest in learning about books that we have for older children, specifically middle grade and teens, YA books and graphic novels. And so I poured a ton of research into figuring out how to answer that question for you or how to start to answer that. And so today we're going to do a really quick burn through of um, all the ages. And then I also threw in some nonfiction and an adult book that was recommended by the Gender Education Network. So I thought we would go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to skip over the rules for right now. Um, I know that we are all here participating respectfully um, about uh, each other's opinions and feelings and wishes, and we're listening with empathy. And so I'm excited to follow those guidelines with you. We're going to um, browse we're going to breeze through the introductions and then we're going to do new learning which is going to be the majority of this presentation and then i'm going to touch on a little bit of resources at the end um, and so i am very excited to meet you all i am becca worthington i'm the children's librarian at imaginon and if you've never visited imaginon it is a hybrid theater library and a partnership with charlotte mecklenburg library and the children's theater of charlotte and we're just one of the branches of the charlotte mecklenburg library we hope you are visiting whatever is your local branch and all of the materials I'm talking about today are available at any of the library branches. Um, so today the objectives, just so you know what you are about to settle in for, is that we are maybe going to share portions of um, a digital version, an ebook of a couple of picture books, just little segments of that. And then basically it's just going to be book talk, book talk, book talk, which means that I'm going to do quick elevator pitches um, at you of a bunch of books that feature LGBTQ content. And then we're going to learn about three of our local LGBTQ nonprofit so that you can look at that for further connection and community. And then if you have questions, then we can definitely answer those. And I'll send you to the um, cmlibrary.org uh, website and talk you through how to access all of these titles that I'm about to talk about today. So we have like a crazy abundance of LGBTQ plus literature for all ages. I have stacks and stacks of books behind me. It's very messy and I know you can see that. And so all of these are books that we pulled in to look at what we're gonna talk about today um, and just fantastic, fantastic titles. I thought we would start, we'll go in age order. And so we're gonna start with the books for babies and toddlers. And this first one is called Glad Glad Bear by Kimberly G. This was published in 2020 as part of the Bear Feelings books. And it is absolutely precious. Bear is super excited for dance class. He loves his tutu and his sparkly slippers. But when he gets to class, the other boys aren't dressed like him. It is a really warm story of acceptance and love. Um, Pride Colors is another one I think we're gonna flip through later in the presentation in ebook format. It's by Robin Stevenson. It's a board book, so it's one for our little babies to chew on. It uses photographs that celebrate real life gay couples with their children through a very simple story using rainbow flag colors as cue. You can see some of the images and language here. A bright red heart, a little star. I love you just the way you are. Cuddles in orange, a snuggle, a snooze. Be yourself. Love who you choose. The language and the photographs are really, really precious. Um, we have some classics, Mommy, Mama, and me by Leslie Newman. And this is the um, counterpart with the gay male couple, which is called Daddy, Papa and Me, the companion title. And these look like this. Um, again, board books, very simple rhymes. Mommy picks me up, up, up. Mama pours juice in my cup. Mommy lets me help her cook. Mama helps me read a book. And then from the father one, who wants to play with me today? I do, Daddy and Papa say. Daddy helps me paint the sky. Papa helps me bake a pie. So those are really precious. And then I'm going featuring a bunch of brand new books that have published in 2021 and 2022. This just came out about two months ago. It's called My Mom's Love Me by Anna Membrino, and it's so beautiful. The artwork is just lovely watercolor. I love my moms and they love me together. We are family is how it starts. Simple rhyming text and sweet pictures used with a baby or a toddler, and you can see those rhymes, and it's also multiracial, which we love and appreciate. And um, similarly, another brand new book that just came out 
out in 2022 is Adventures with My Daddies by Gareth Peter, um, pictures by Gary Parsons. And the artwork inside looks like this. My daddies are amazing. They're funny, kind, and smart. And when they read me stories, exciting journeys start. And so we have some wonderful classics and brand new picture books with same-sex couples. Um, I love this book. It's called Lovely by Jess Hong. And I read this a lot when I do LGBTQ or Pride story times for the little ones. It's one of my favorite books available for any kind of diversity. Um, and it talks about what is lovely. Lovely is different. And so it's really simple. It's got positive messaging. It's full of people with sleeve tattoos and unibrows and piercings. Um, the language that is on this page says, fancy, sporty, graceful, stompy. So it's got men in beards and corsets and look at these hairy legs in those high heels. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, so we love this representation is wonderful. The message is that we are all lovely plus bonus person in a hot dog outfit right there on the back. Um, so we love Todd Parr. He is an author illustrator that does books for our very young kiddos. And this book is called The Family Book. And if you see that little logo that says banned book in the corner, some of these books that we're featuring today have been frequently banned and challenged and banned books week is coming up in just a couple of weeks so we're paying attention and actually challenges are on the rise and when we get into our ya section at the end of today's presentation we're going to see a lot of banned books coming through which is unfortunate but it also means they're getting attention um, and so the family book has been on the top 10 banned books list for a long time and you wouldn't think so out the gate it says some families are big some families are small some families look alike some families look like their pet um, but the page Page that has gotten it banned and challenged is this one. Some families have two moms or two dads, um, but all families can help each other be strong. So we love that book. And Todd Parr also has books like this, Be Who You Are. His messaging is always very inclusive and very positive. So breezing through, that was books for babies and toddlers. And again, I'm just skimming the surface of what we have and giving you some of my my personal favorites. And now we're getting into books for preschoolers. And I love this precious little kid, those thumbs up. So this is more ages three to five. Uh, one of my absolute favorites, Neither by Arlie Anderson. So once upon a time, there were two kinds, this and that, those and these, one or the other until honk. So what kind are you, they all ask. And neither says, I'm both. And they say, you can't be both. You must be neither. I'm neither. Neither is told they're not rabbity enough to play with the rabbits. They're not birdie enough to play with the birds. They should go searching for somewhere else. And away they fly. And then they do find the land of all where there are many kinds. There's this and that and somewhat and whatnot and either and very and just and sort of. And everybody is welcome. It's a beautiful story. I have cried more than once in public while reading this to a room full of adults and children. And um, it's just a great story of inclusion. And it's also a great discussion starter. And of course, I'm going to feature a brand new book that just came out, which is The Hips on the Drag Queen Goes Swish, Swish, Swish by Lil Miss Hot Mess. We love this. It just got published, like, I think about a month and a half ago. And we're all obsessed with it. Um, it also, of course, the hair on the drag queen goes up, up, up. The cheeks go blush, blush, blush. Here's some of the artwork from inside. The jewels on the drag queen go bling, bling, bling. Um, the shoulders go shimmy. The fingers go snap, snap, snap. And the shoes on the drag queen go stomp 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 so this book is a lot of fun and it ends with a dance of the drag queen it goes twirl 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 and if you're looking for equally unsubtle literature for your little ones we've got the gay bcs this is by ml webb and this one kind of sells itself you know a is for ally b is for bi d is for drag l is for lesbian n is for non-binary, T is for trans, and of course, V is for Vogue. Um, so here is just what you see, one of the inside spreads. So for the letter G, for example, G is for gay. It's a word that implies you're a girl who likes girls or a guy who likes guys. Very straightforward alphabet book, The Gay BCs. Um, and we're really excited about this one. This one came out at the end of 2019, so it's still pretty new as well. It's called My Maddie by Gail Pittman. Most mommies are girls, uh, most daddies are boys, but a lot of parents are neither a boy nor a girl like My Maddie. My Maddie has hazel eyes, which aren't brown or green, and My Maddie likes sporks because they're not either a spoon or a fork. Some of the best things in the world are not one or the other. They're something in between and entirely their own. It's also got information in the back which is called Back Matter for parents who are members of gender minority communities, including transgender, gender nonconforming, um, and gender diverse. 
Um, and then one of the things that I wanted to make sure we feature several of are books like this called Harriet Gets Carried Away by Jesse Sima. If you're looking for something that's part of a trend in publishing where a book that is not about LGBTQ issues at all still celebrates it, um, then that would be a book like this. Harriet Gets Carried Away has a girl who goes to the store with her dads on her birthday um, or the day of her birthday party and she's dressed like a penguin and she accidentally gets carried away on a hot air balloon by a group of actual penguins and ends up in Antarctica. Um, and the parents are just peripheral characters. They're just two people who love their quirky daughter. And in the past, authors and publishers would have defaulted probably to male-female couple, but we're seeing more and more appearances of same-sex couples in books that aren't about the gay experience at all, and we love that. So another book that's brand new, again, just about a month old, is called Bathe the Cat, and this is by Alice B. McGinty. Um, and so this is a really funny one. It's a tale of mixed up chores and family silliness and a multiracial home with same-sex parents. A cat finds out it's supposed to get a bath, and so it scrambles up the chore list, and before you know what's happening. Sarah, feed the floor. I'll sweep the dishes. Bobby, rock the rug. Dad will scrub the fishes. I'll vacuum the lawn. Bobby, mow the mat. Sarah, mop the baby. Wait, where is the cat? And so um, they keep getting their chores all mixed up and it's a really fun rhyming book. And another one that is not about um, same-sex experience. It's just a book about loving your baby. It's called Plenty of Hugs. This is another new one as well. It's by Fran Manushkin. Um, and as you can see, it's beautifully illustrated artwork and very simple sentences. There's plenty of blue for bluebirds and red for strawberries too. There are big round eyes for owls, big ears for bunnies too, a pouch for each sleepy kangaroo and my strong arms to carry you. Um, it's got a beautiful lesbian couple there and also a brand new book called Mr. Watson's Chickens by Jarrett Dapier. And this is a really goofy one. Mr. Watson and Mr. Nelson have a big house with a teeny tiny yard and a big, big honking city. And they also have pets, including a sensible number of chickens. But however, the egg laying begins and three chickens becomes 456 and they are everywhere. They're in the shower, they're on the breakfast table, they're in your boots. And worst of all, they sing. And so calamity strikes. This story is fun and silly. But um, what is cool is that Mr. Nelson and Mr. Watson are a biracial gay couple with a loving and supportive partnership. And there's a really broadly multi-ethnic supporting cast as well. So a lot of these books, you can see how we're trending and publishing towards just it, it creating books that are not about LGBTQ issues that support that and celebrate that, which is nice. And then there are books like this, which is called Except When They Don't, which is about destroying, just decimating gender norms. This is by Laura Gale. Um, so it starts off and you got to like, hang on a second. It starts off boys play with monster trucks with glee. Girls bake cakes and serve hot tea. Girls like pom poms, pink and jewels and boys like fighting pirate duels except when they don't. And so the book keeps doing that. And it's just a really fun way. It's a book for boys who delight in princess frocks and girls who race their cars loud and fast. And for boys and girls who like kittens and ballet and play football all day long and make forts in their living room. It's just for everybody. And so that's except when they don't. And the message is to be exactly who you are. You have permission and support to be yourself. What Riley wore is another one that I've used many times at story times, always really positive response. And this is by Alana K. Arnold. Um, so on Monday, Riley wore a bunny costume to school because Riley felt shy. And on Tuesday, Riley wore a superhero cape to the dentist's office because Riley wanted to be brave. On Wednesday, Riley wore a ball gown to dinner. And on Thursday, space jammies. And on Friday, this outfit, the rubber boots, a police officer jacket, and the world's best tutu. Um, and for the park, Riley put on purple jeans, the world's best tutu, a crazy monster shirt, red rubber boots, round aviator goggles, and a hat with dinosaur spikes. And this is the page that I just love more than anything else. I'm going to read it to you. It says, at the park, Riley felt shy. Then a kid from school walked up and asked, are you a girl or a boy? Riley said, today I'm a firefighter and a dancer and a monster hunter and a pilot and a dinosaur. Oh, said the kid, do you want to play? and Riley felt wonderful. So this book is really special. It's really careful to use no pronouns at any time. It never assigns a gender to precious little Riley. 
Um, so we're moving along. Let's go into books for lower elementary, by which I'm calling that like kindergarten through third grade. And we'll breeze through some of these. This is Prince and Knight by Daniel Hack. Daniel Hack has written several books that celebrate the LGBTQ experience. And the artwork for this one is like a Disney movie. It's gorgeous. Once upon a time in a kingdom far from here was a charming prince who was handsome and sincere. The fairy tale begins with the king and queen trying to find him a bride, but maybe that's not necessarily his sham. So he goes off to fight a dragon and along on horseback came a knight cloaked in armor and the knight rescues the prince and they fall in love and um, here you can see just how gorgeous this artwork is it is like a Disney film in your hands and the king and queen are overjoyed that their prince found someone to love also by Daniel Hack but illustrated by a different artist is Maiden and Princess um, and so this is the lesbian version of that story, kind of a fairy tale, and it has a warrior princess, um, and everybody wants her to dance with the prince, but she's more interested in the prince's sister. And so this is them falling in love. King and King by Linda DeHaan is a really cool, you'll see that band books logo up in the corner. Again, it's another fabulous fairy tale about a prince whose parents are trying to marry him off to princesses, but he falls in love with another prince. And that uh, image that you see of them kissing with the heart over the lips. This was actually a fun fact, which you might not have known, was the first image of two men romantically kissing in a children's book. And it was published in 2000. And that was um, when this book started getting banned. <laughs> um, but we love this book. It holds up. It's still a great story. There is a series about Jacob. Um, this is one of the most banned books of the last decade, Jacob's New Dress. It's published by Imagination Press, which is a children's publisher of the American Psychological Association. They publish this whole series. So Jacob loves playing dress up when he can be anything he wants to be. Some kids at school say he can't wear girl clothes, but Jacob wants to wear a dress to school. Can he convince him, his parents to let him wear what he wants? This story is very heartwarming and it speaks to the unique challenges faced by boys who don't wanna identify with traditional gender roles. Um, Jacob's room to choose, talks about the bathroom experience and Jacob's school play starring he, she, and they is a pronoun story. And so all of these books um, talk about really important milestones, developmentally and help um, children foster respect for their peers and for themselves. And then similarly, this is another series that functions in that same way. Um, this is the Max and Friends series. Book one is called Call Me Max. Book two is called Max and the Talent Show. And book three, which just came out recently, is called Max on the Farm. When Max starts school, the teacher hesitates to call out the name on the attendance sheet. Something doesn't seem to fit. Max lets her know that the name he wants to be called by is a boy's name. The series is written in an age appropriate way by a trans author named Kyle Lukoff, and it's a really wonderful introduction to what it means to be transgender. Um, Jack Not Jackie by Erica Silverman. Susan thinks her little sister Jackie has the best giggle. She can't wait for Jackie to get older so they can play forest fairies and be explorers together. But as time passes, Jackie shows no interest in those games and wants to play with mud and be a super bug. And Jackie doesn't like dresses or having long hair and would rather be called Jack. This was published in partnership with GLAAD um, and a portion of the sales is donated to accelerating LGBTQ acceptance. And it ends with this beautiful, beautiful page of the sister being so happy for her brother. This is a brand new book. Um, this is called My Rainbow by Trinity and Deshauna Neal. Trinity is a beautiful rainbow. She loves soft things, color, and coding, and she embraces all parts of her identity as a Black transgender girl on the autism spectrum. But on a quiet sunny day during playtime, Trinity has an important realization. She wants long hair like her dolls. And so this is the experience of Trinity getting that long rainbow of hair. When Aiden became a brother, you can see it's got a Stonewall Book Award on it. Um, those awards are for uh, books that represent the LGBTQ experience. It's an award that is given by the American Library Association and several of the books on here will have that award on there. When Aiden became a brother, when Aiden was born, everybody thought that he was a girl, but once he came out as a trans boy, Aiden and his parents fixed the parts of his life that didn't really fit anymore, and he settled happily into being himself, and then mom and dad announced that they're having another baby, and Aiden wants to get everything right for his new sibling, but what happens if he messes up? With a little help, Aiden discovers that he already knows the most important thing about being a brother, which is how to love with his whole heart, and the author is a trans man. Um, another new book 
is called Mama and Mommy and Me in the Middle by Nina LaCour. And we love this book. This is beautiful artwork. The best feeling in the entire world is fitting snugly between the people you love as high as the sky who love you back as deep as the ocean. When mommy is gone, even for a short little while, the sky can turn gray and it's hard to know where you belong, even though mama tries her best. And when the parent comes back, it can take more than a hug to fix the empty spot that you felt all week. It's another brand new book. This is called Born Ready, the true story of a boy named Penelope. This is written by Jody Patterson. Everybody knows Penelope loves skateboarding and karate. They also know that Penelope is a great ninja, strong and powerful and a champion secret keeper. But Penelope has one secret that feels too big and too scary to keep in. He's a boy and always has been. Together, he and his mama join forces to show the world that no matter who you are or how you look on the outside, it's your time to shine. You are born ready. And another brand new book that I actually just discovered yesterday, I don't think it just came out yesterday, but I just read it, is Love Violet. And this is by Charlotte Sullivan Wilde. Of all the kids in her class, the only one makes Violet's heart skip. Mira, the girl with a cheery laugh who races like the wind. If only they could adventure together. But every time that Violet tries to tell Mira how she feels, Violet goes shy. And as Valentine's Day approaches, Violet is determined to show Mira just how special she is. And that is, I mean, spoiler alert, but they end up together. <laughs> So I'm not a girl. I'm actually going to skip over some of these. So we have time to get to the YA books and the middle grade that I have planned. But um, we do have wonderful classics. I Am Jazz, you might be familiar with. It's also one of those top band books from the past years. It's by Jazz Jennings, who's a trans child. Um, and that is her beautiful self right there. And Phoenix Goes to School. Again, classics that have been around for a little bit. It's a true story by Michelle and Phoenix Finch. Um, Uncle Bobby's Wedding, also one of those top band books. You see those little icons over there just bragging. This was originally done with animals that were in like an anthropomorphic gay marriage. And it has been redone about two years ago to look like this. This is how the story looks now, Uncle Bobby's Wedding. So taking the hamsters away and putting people where they belong. Um, and then Heather Has Two Mommies, one of the top band books of all time by Leslie Newman. Um, and then I do wanna stop for a second just to feature this one because it is a brand new one. It's also a Stonewall honor book. You can see that award there on the cover. This is by Harry Woodgate. Granddad always used to tell his granddaughter amazing stories of his world travels with Gramps in their camper van. But since Gramps died, Granddad hasn't felt like adventuring anymore. Can his spunky granddaughter convince him to dust off the old and get back on the open road. It's just a really, really lovely memory story that celebrates a long-term um, gay uh, loving relationship. And then I just wanted to take a moment to feature this nonfiction book. This is called Who Are You? The Kid's Guide to Gender Identity. It's by Brooke Pesson Wedby. Um, and it can be used for as young as three years old, but is intended more through the K through three age group. It's straightforward language to talk about our body, our gender expression, and our gender identity. And the back matter of it includes a gender wheel for clarification which is a lot of fun and very helpful. Um, so I'm just going to barrel on. We're going to get into middle grade now, and I'm probably going to be skipping a lot of these slides, but I will be taking you to the BiblioCommons link at the end of today's presentation where you can read more about all of the titles. And so depending on your reading level, this is intended for grades three through seven. And I wanted to start off with Making a Baby. This is a brand new book. And the reason I'm including this is because it is a very intentionally inclusive guide to how every family begins. It answers questions about conception, birth, pregnancy in a comfortable and candid way and embraces how every family begins in its own special way. And it takes a lot of special attention and time um, to look at LGBTQ couples and how they make a baby. Um, and so let's look at this one, The Meaning of Pride. This is a new one as well. I'm using the very cool artwork by Sam Kirk. And this is written by Rosie Thor. Every year in June, or if you're Charlotte in August, we celebrate pride. But what does pride mean? And how do you celebrate it? This celebration of the LGBTQ experience and community throughout history shows readers that there are many ways to show your pride. 
And speaking of showing your pride, we have Queer Heroes, which is another brand new book. It's only a couple months old. This is meeting 53 LGBTQ heroes from past and present. It's by Arabelle Sicardi. Um, it's published in 2022, and it talks about how LGBTQ movements around the world have changed history. Several pivotal events, brave people who fought against discrimination and prejudice, and it's got inspiring messages from LGBTQ youth across the community. Um, Pride is another brand new book, an inspirational history of the LGBTQ movement. I'll let you explore some of these on your own. Rainbow Revolutionaries by Sarah Prager is fantastic. And the biography of Harvey Milk and the Rainbow Flag um, is called Pride by Rob Sanders, which has gotten nominated from several awards. And UBU by Jonathan Brampman is a kid's guide to gender, sexuality, and family. So I'm not gonna blurb those, but we're gonna go into our chapter books um, for middle grade. If you recognize this image. I recently watched Better Nate Than Ever, which is a Disney Plus original movie. It's so good. And it is such a wonderful adaptation of the book, Better Nate Than Ever by Tim Fetterly. Um, it is about a boy who sneaks away from his home and he falls in love with New York when he gets his brother's fake ID and his mom's ATM card. He lies to the adults and his conscience weighs on him, but he, his conscience weighs on him, but he's focused on his goal, which is to audition for a Broadway musical. And it has other books in the series, five, six, seven Nate and Nate expectations and I think that this series is going to keep going for a while especially given the success of the movie um, you'll notice that I've started I'm starting here with including the author photo um, next to the book and a lot of that the reasoning behind that is because almost all of these are what are called own voices books so the hashtag own voices um, is not just for LGBTQ books it's also for people with disabilities people on the, uh, on the spectrum you know but anyone who is writing a story that can considers themselves to be writing about their own experience from an informed place. So maybe the author is trans, maybe they identify um, as LGBTQ, but the photos are up here because almost all of these are own voices books. Um, so this first one is called Middle School's a Drag, You Better Work. And this is by Greg Howard. This was highly recommended by the Gender Education Network. And it's a hilarious chapter book about a middle school drag queen named Coco Caliente, Mistress of Madness and Mayhem him, otherwise known as eighth grader Julian Vasquez. Um, and uh, Coco Caliente finds an agent in 12-year-old classmate Mikey Truitt, who's the one with the sunglasses kind of peeping out of the corner of that uh, curtain. Mikey's not quite ready to be out, but as he prepares Coco for the gig of a lifetime, he realizes there's not really a rule book to being gay. And if Julian can be openly gay at school, maybe Mikey can too. Um, Melissa by Alex Gino was previously published as George and has been thankfully rebranded as Melissa. If you have an older elementary kiddo, this is the chapter book about the transgender experience that is excellent. Um, when people look at Melissa, they think they see a boy named George, but she knows she's not a boy. She knows she's a girl. Melissa thinks she'll have to keep it a secret forever, but then her teacher announces their class play is going to be Charlotte's Web, and Melissa really, 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 really wants to play Charlotte, but the teacher says that she can't even try out for the part because she's a boy. With the help of her best friend, Kelly, Melissa comes up with a plan, not just so she can be Charlotte, but so everyone knows who she is once and for all. Um, I've got several titles by Alex Gino, and there they are right there. Rick was what was published by Alex Gino after Melissa. Um, and it's a follow-up kind of companion piece. Rick's never questioned much. He's gone along with his best friend, Jeff, even when Jeff's acted like a bully and a jerk. He lets his, he's let his father joke with him about which hot girls he might want to date, even though he, that kind of talk makes him uncomfortable. And he hasn't given his own identity much thought because everyone else around him seems to have figured it out. But now Rick's gotten to middle school and new doors are opening. And one of them leads to the school's Rainbow Spectrum Club, where kids of many genders and identities congregate, including Melissa, which is from the previous book. Um, and so Rick wants his life to be understood. The Pants Project by Kat Clark. Liv knows that he was always meant to be a boy, but with his new school's terrible dress code, he can't even wear pants, only skirts. So Operation 
the pants project. Only way for Liv to get what he wants is to go after himself, but to live, this is not just a mission to change the policy, it's a mission to change his life, and it is a pretty big deal. Gracefully Grayson by Amy Polanski. What if who you are on the outside doesn't match who you are on the inside? Grayson Sender has been holding on to a secret for what seems like forever. He is a girl on the inside stuck in the wrong gender's body. The weight of this secret is crushing, but sharing it would mean ridicule, scorn, rejection, or maybe worse. But despite those risks, Grayson's true self itches to break free. So will new strength from an unexpected friendship and a caring teacher's wisdom be enough to help Grayson step into the spotlight she was born to inhabit? And yes, um, Alice Austin lived here is another one by Alex Gino. I'm just going to skip over that one. You can look them up. The Moon Within is a really wonderful book that has won a lot of awards. Um, and it, one of the characters, one of the main characters in it is gender fluid. Alan Cole is not a coward. Alan can't stand up to his cruel brother, Nathan, any more than he can let the cute boy across the cafeteria know that he's got a crush on him. But when Nathan discovers Alan's secret, the older brother announces a high stakes competition and each brother must compete in seven nearly impossible tasks. Whoever finishes the most wins the game. And if Alan doesn't want to be outed by his brother to all of Evergreen Middle School, he's got to do these challenges. Um, and he's only got the help of two friends even less cool than he is. This is Alan Cole is not a coward. Witch Boy, graphic novel, graphic novel, graphic novel. We love Molly Astrotag. Almost everything that she has done falls into the LGBTQ um, category and she is an amazing graphic novelist. Um, everyone in Astor's family is born with magic. Boys grow up to be shapeshifters and girls grow up to be witches. There are no exceptions to this. But Astor can't seem to get the, the, shape, the, the hang of shapeshifting. Instead, he spends his time spying on the witchery lessons that the girls are getting and he seems to have a knack for casting spells. But one night during shape-shifting practice, one of the boys goes missing and Aster knows that he can search for the boy with the witchcraft that he's secretly been learning, but that could be breaking the family's most important tradition. Is he gonna save the day or is he gonna ruin absolutely everything? Um, the newest book in this series, which just came out a couple months ago is called Hidden Witch. I just got to read it about a month ago. It's wonderful. And then coming out soon is The Midwinter Witch. And so hopefully this series will continue and continue. We love it. Uh, this is another new book. This is called Drum Roll Please by Lisa Jen Bigelow. Um, and I love that cover. I think it's beautiful. Melly Goodwin loves playing the drums. It's the only time she doesn't feel like a mouse, but when she goes to Camp Rockaway, fresh with the news that her parents are getting divorced, she meets her new band member, Adeline, who's got a sandpapery voice and a beat up guitar. And at night when the girls in the tent are comparing crushes, Melly finds she's not thinking about boys, she's thinking about Adeline. So that's a new one, drum roll please. Small Town Pride, also brand spanking new, brand new. Jake is enjoying life as his school's first openly gay kid. His family and friends are accepting, they're supportive, but when his dad puts a huge pride flag in their front yard in kind of an overblown showing of love, um, the mayor begins receiving complaints and concerns that the flag is going to lead to something outlandish. <gasps> oh no, a pride parade in Barton Springs, Ohio, but Jake decides, what the heck, let's launch a campaign to make a pride parade happen. This is a nice small town gay um, uh, teen story or tween story. The Best Man by Richard Peck. Richard Peck has won a bunch of awards. He unfortunately um, just died at 86, not too long ago. So this is one of his last books, um, but it is a really cool premise. Archer has spent all of elementary school on the lookout for role models, and he has four, his grandpa, his dad, his uncle Paul, and his teacher, Mr. McLeod. When middle school hits, he gets a really big surprise when he's asked to be the best man at the wedding of two of his role models. Just how much change is gonna happen before his voice does. Um, we're going to breeze through a couple of these. I just wanted you to be aware of them. King and the Dragonflies is a multiple award winner by Kaysen Callender, um, who is the same author who wrote Hurricane Child, which is another multiple award winner, including that Stonewall Book Award, um, which I have mentioned before. We're going to talk for a second about Anna on the Edge by A.J. Sass. This is a heartfelt coming of age story about a non-binary character navigating a binary world, and it's in the world of um, professional ice skating. So it has a transgender boy in it. It's really beautiful. 
One True Way by Shannon Hitchcock. Allie and Sam are classmates at Daniel Boone Middle School. Allie and Sam are friends. Allie and Sam are girls. Allie and Sam are fallen for each other. It's 1977 and girls who like girls are forced to question their choices. This is a small town story about love, acceptance, and change. The Best at It by Nikki Smith. Um, just going to scan through some of these and focus on the ones that I am particularly interested in. I loved The Deep and Dark Blue. This is one of the best graphic novels I've read in years, and this is by Nikki Smith. After a terrible political coup that usurps their noble house, Hawk and Grayson, brothers, flee to stay alive and assume new identities as Hannah and Grace. Desperation and chance lead them into the communion of blue, which is an order of magical women who spin threads out of reality. And as the twins learn more about the communion and about themselves. They hatch a plan to avenge their family and retake their thrones. But while Hawk is really interested in returning to his old life, Grace realizes that she wants to stay in the one place that will allow her to finally live as a girl. I love this story. Boy Named Queen is a lot of fun by Sarah Cassidy. Zenobia July by Lisa Bunker, um, who also wrote Felix YZ, which is another LGBTQ story. Zenobia July is starting a new life. She used to live in Arizona with her father, and now she's in Maine with her aunts. She used to spend most of her time behind a computer screen as a hacker, um, and now she's coming out of her shell, and she is discovering a community of friends at her new middle school. People used to tell her she was a boy, but now she's able to openly live as a girl that she always knew she was. When someone anonymously posts hateful memes on her school's website, Zenobia knows that she's the one with the cyber abilities to solve the mystery, all while wrestling with the challenges of a new school and a new family and coming to grips with her true gender for the first time. So that's Zenobia July. Um, and now we are in YA, so we're getting towards the end. Just a couple more stories. This is brand new nonfiction that was recommended to me by one of the um, uh, trans staffers from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, my buddy Howie. Um, so this is a quick and easy guide to queer and trans identities. And this is uh, done by two comic novelists. And it uh, is a cartoonist guide for teens through essential topics of the LGBTQ world, like sexuality and gender identity, coming out, navigating relationships, and the artwork is really fun and really nice colors um, and it's told with great humor and so now uh, just a handful of YA novels that have come to me as highly recommended by members of the LGBTQ community. I wish you all the best by Mason Deaver. When Ben DeBacker comes out to their parents as non-binary, they're thrown out of their house and they're forced to move in with their estranged older sister, Hannah, and her husband, Thomas, who Ben has never even met. Struggling with an anxiety disorder compounded with their parents' rejection, they come out only to Hannah, Thomas, and their therapist and try and keep a low profile at the new school. But Ben's attempts to survive the last half of senior year unnoticed are thwarted when Nathan Allen, this funny, charismatic student, um, decides to take Ben under his wing. As Ben and Nathan's friendship grows, their feelings for each other begin to change. And what started as a disastrous turn of events looks like it might be the start of a happier new time. Stay Gold by Tobley McSmith. Pony Flint plans to fly under the radar this year, tired of getting too much attention at his old school is coming out as transgender. He's hoping for a fresh start at Hillcrest high scene. Oh, sorry. I hadn't practiced this one out loud. Let's try it again. <laughs> He's hoping for a fresh start as a Hillcrest high senior, but it's hard to live your best life with the threat of exposure lurking around every corner. Georgia is beginning to think there's more to life than cheerleading. She just wants to keep a low profile until graduation, which is why she promised herself that dating is a non-starter for the foreseeable future. But then on the very first day of classes, the new guy and the cheerleader lock eyes. I'm excited to read this one. I haven't had a chance yet, but I think it sounds awesome. Stay gold. If I Was Your Girl, and you can see all those awards on the cover of that book. It won a ton of awards. This is by Meredith Russo, um, who is a trans woman. Amanda Hardy is the new girl in school. And like anyone else, all she wants to do is make friends and fit in. But she's keeping a secret, and she's determined not to get too close to anybody. And then she meets this sweet, easygoing Grant, and she can't help but think about him in her life and they spend more time together 
she finds that she's yearning to share with Grant everything about herself, including her past, but Amanda's terrified that once she tells him the truth, he won't be able to see past it because the secret Amanda's been keeping is that at her old school, she used to be Andrew. Will the truth cost Amanda her new life and her new love? This is a nonfiction book called Trans Plus, Love, Sex, Romance, and Being You. This is YA nonfiction. So if that's what you're looking for, this is a all-inclusive, uncensored, must-have guide for teens who are transgender or non-binary, gender non-conforming, gender fluid, or questioning their gender identity or for cis allies. If you're looking for something that answers the hard questions, this would be a good place to start. We are totally normal by Rahul Kanakia. Um, Nadan's got a plan to make his junior year perfect, but hooking up with his friend Dave is not part of it, especially because Nandan has never been into guys. Still, Nandan's willing to give a relationship with him a shot, but his anxiety starts to grow about what his sexuality means for himself, his friends, his social life, and he starts to wonder if he can take it all back. His breaking up with Dave, the only person who's ever really gotten them worth feeling normal again, and that normal is in quotes. Well, I got a handful more. This is one of my favorites. You can tell that I'm a graphic novel person because this is another graphic novel called The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. Prince Sebastian is looking for a bride, or rather his parents are looking for one for him. And Sebastian is too busy hiding his secret life from everyone. At night, he puts on daring dresses and takes Paris by storm as the famous Lady Cristalia, the hottest fashion icon in the world capital of fashion. But Sebastian's secret weapon is his brilliant dress maker who you see there on the cover, Francis, his best friend and one of only two people who know the truth that sometimes this boy wears dresses. But Francis dreams of greatness herself and being someone's secret weapon means being a secret forever. So how long can Francis defer her dreams to protect her friend? And All Boys Aren't Blue, I thought this was an important one to come towards the end with because this is under huge scrutiny right now and is being banned everywhere. Um, this author is being very vocal and doing a lot of panels and events. If you have a chance to um, see George Johnson talk about his experience being banned for All Boys Aren't Blue, I highly recommend it. This is a YA manifesto and a series of personal essays. And um, he is a prominent journalist and an LGBTQ activist. And he's exploring his childhood, his adolescence, and his college years um, from the memories of getting his teeth kicked out by bullies when he was five years old to flea marketing with his loving grandmother, his first sexual relationships and triumphs and trials faced by black queer boys. This covers it all. Um, and also it's just gotten optioned for a movie by Gabrielle Union's film company. So that, that could be very, very exciting. Um, now we are going to um, end with two books for adults. So if you are interested in reading something for you that um, is not necessarily for your child, this is called Fine. This is a comic about gender by Nikki Sm uh, by uh, Rhea Ewing. Sorry, that's a typo over there. Um, and the non-binary comic illustrator went on a quest back in 2012 for several years to have a greater understanding of what gender is and turned their Midwestern town interviews into comics. So this is a whole bunch of different um, perspectives on what gender means in a small community in the Midwest. And the last one is This is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. This was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. This is a book for adults and it was a discussion pick for PFLAG, which is the Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays Charlotte book club as well. Um, they brought it to my attention and recommended it highly. Claude is five years old and the youngest of five brothers and he loves peanut butter sandwiches. He also loves wearing a dress and dreams of being a princess. When he grows up, Claude says he wants to be a girl. This is the story of his parents um, who really want Claude to be whoever Claude wants to be. They're just not ready to share that yet with the world, but soon the family secret explodes. So that's, this is how it always is. And then I just wanted to go to three websites of Charlotte um, chapters of uh, uh, NGOs and organizations. If you're looking for community that supports LGBTQ and trans experiences, couldn't recommend PFL flag Charlotte more. They are amazing to work with. So again, that stands for parents and friends of lesbians and gays. Um, therefore, uh, friends, families, and allies, straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, cis, trans, non-binary, and they're here for you to strengthen 
families and empower allies. Um, the Gender Education Network, also amazing. They're actually based out of Indian Trail um, and they are new-ish. They just started in 2018 and they're dedicated specifically to trans children and providing those trans kids with information and education that they need. And then Charlotte Pride, of course, we are less than a week out from the Charlotte Pride experience. Um, and they are an organization that presents and collaborates on programs and activities, including the festival um, and the Pride Parade, which are happening this weekend. And I'm gonna be there marching and I hope I'll see many of you there. Um, so that is the end. I know I just pitched a ton of books. And if you have any that you loved, then I hope that you head to our cmlibrary.org and search the catalog. I have three lists that can be publicly shared. Um, and one was the Pride Storytime Early Gay and Trans Stories, which are the kind of zero to seven-year-old stories. So I have a list of those for you. Um, and then created a list of all of those middle grade and YA books, including the ones I skipped over. So if I skipped over something of interest, then go back and check it out. And then also created a shorter list of some brand new titles that just came out in 2021 and 2022. And that is all that I have to say today. So thank you so much for joining and thank you.